Good morning, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Well, <clears throat> this is going to be a redo of a video that I did yesterday, but um, there were some things amiss, uh, a few things amiss, and um, the Lord was not happy with what um, the video I had done. Um, but in this video, this video is intended primarily for the Church of the Living God, for our edification, for our instruction, and also a warning. As I slept, um, Brother JT sent me a message about how, um, you know, it's, it is official. Uh, Joe Biden is the president-elect. But uh, Brother Jacob brought up um, that how Trump might, how they might recount the votes or something, or something like that around that those lines. I don't remember if he said that, but what he was getting at was that Trump might decide to plant his feet and to stay in, or they will work all kinds of things to try to keep him in. <clears throat> Regardless, brethren, Church of the Living God here in my nation, things are going to be getting bad really soon. Really soon. And are we prepared? And also, brethren, um, sisters, um, to every single one of you, has given unto us. The Lord recompense you mightily, for we are unable to do any recompense ourselves. What you, the Church of the Living God, has done for us through our Lord Jesus Christ has given us a place to live, puts food on the table, pays for the lights and also the internet which is a necessity and um, <clears throat> thank you thank you to every one of you you know who you are and what is so joyful unto us <clears throat> there are those out there who try to prevent that, who try to discredit and try to destroy, but they actually in reality have the opposite effect. What can I say? But brethren, <clears throat> with the times coming upon us, if you are one who has taken a stand upon the authorized version of the scriptures and have been cast out as evil for the Son of Man's sake, you are known, you are marked in a way. And the question now with very troublous times on our horizon and that is that it doesn't matter what nation you are in <clears throat> we have to really consider have we counted the cost have we counted the cost and that in this video you're going to see will play out itself in several areas That's so why I always recommend to the brethren, if you're going to read another book other than God's book, the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures, um, read Fox's Book of Martyrs, brethren. You will see what Roman Catholicism does when they are in power. And alas, they are coming to power once again. For not a new world order. Oh no. 
for a return to the old order, reminiscent to the Dark Ages. Are we ready? Get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. And turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Luke chapter 14. <clears throat> Luke chapter 14. We will be reading verses 25 on to verse 35 and Luke chapter 15. And Luke chapter 14, excuse me, Luke chapter 14. We begin. And there went great multitudes with him, Jesus. And he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me, and hate not his father, and mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, and his own life also. He cannot be my disciple. Now, our Lord Jesus Christ is not telling you to literally go up to like your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your wife. I hate you. I hate you. No, 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 no. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, must be numero uno, number one, the most important person, spirit, soul, and body of your entire life. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is the priority of those of us who are of his body, the Church of the Living God. And he, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, must come before father and mother and wife and children <clears throat> and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also. And if you don't do that, he cannot be my disciple. <clears throat> and his own life also. Very quickly, hold your place there and go to Job chapter 2. Job chapter 2. Job chapter 2, verses 4 on to verse 6. Job chapter 2, verses 4 on to verse 6. Read the entire context from verse 1 on to verse 6 on your own time. Job chapter 2, verses 4 on to verse 6. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. Back now to Luke chapter 14, verse 26. If any man come to me, and hate not his father, and mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, Verse 4 in Job chapter 2, And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea. All that a man hath will he give for his life. Back to Luke chapter 14, verse 26 again, And his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. You know, when it gets close and personal onto you. You might be willing, ready to die for our Lord Jesus Christ, even though all forsake. But what happens when 
it comes to you directly and personally. Do you ever get the impression that the Lord is saying, whatever your name is, before the cock crow, thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me? Oh, you say, no, nay, Brad. <clears throat> Let's continue. Verse, from verse 27, continuing. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Brethren who are known for taking stands upon the scriptures for our God, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, who are known of Brother Brian, Brother Aaron Judge, Brother Matthew Landau, Brother Alexander Hartley, to name a few. We take a stand. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. We have gone after the Lord. There are many of you who do bear your cross. But see, now the time is coming when it's going to start turning towards us. It, it already has. And those of us who are of the church of the living God, we know this. And we will stand for our Lord Jesus Christ, even on to death. You're not, no one. <clears throat> no, 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 no. No one is going to take the scriptures away from me. You will have to kill me. The means to defend my wife. You will have to kill me. To take those away. And see. Personally. I have made very many pro loud protestations. Against. <laughs> the ridiculous social distancing. And the inevitable. Forced, mandatory, yet not mandatory, vaccinations. That Holy Joe is going to bring in. You don't have to take it, remember. But if you don't. And see, it's all preparatory. <laughs> and the eventual... <coughs> Soon, soon coming vaccination and see it's getting these lost people prepared to take the mark of the beast because if it's going to come if you don't take the vaccine you will not be able to buy or sell the people who will be left behind will be prepared for it D brethren Church and living God. See, the enemies of our Lord already know this. Of course. Why do you think they're so rabid? Why do you think they're so vicious? Do we have a firm grasp on this? And are we ready? Let's continue. For which of you intending to build a tower... Sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether he hath sufficient to finish it. Lest happily, after he hath laid the foundation, and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him. Saying, This man began to build, and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war, uh, war against another king, sitteth not down first, and consulteth whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000. Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage and desireth conditions of peace. 
also likewise, whosoever he be of you, that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. And guess what? All that he hath, that includes your own self. And I'm not talking about going out to be a crazy, you know, purposely martyring yourself. No, 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 no. When you think about it, that's a little too easy, isn't it? Isn't it? Think about it. Go out and be a martyr. Purposely, right? Yeah. That's, that's a little bit on the easier side than having to remain and standing firm. Know what I'm saying? Remaining and standing firm. Verse 34 and verse 35. Salt is good, despite what the Jesuit doctors tell you. But if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be seasoned? Flavorless salt. It is neither fit for the land, nor yet for the dunghill, but men cast it out. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Has the law, uh, has the salt lost its savor? Willing to give in, to get by? Especially what's coming right now? With the persecutions that are going to be coming to the church of the living God. See, this is the time that's rapidly approaching, and we have already seen this, brethren. Those who say they are of us, but they're not of us, are being weeded out. And why is that? Why is that? Numbers. Numbers chapter 32. We're going to read one verse. Just one verse. Read the context on your own time. Read the context on your own time. In Numbers chapter 32, verse 23. Read the context on your own time. The context is from verse 20 all the way up to ver uh, verse 33. Okay, that's the whole context. But, okay, read that on your own time. But, uh, Numbers chapter 32, verse 23. <clears throat> but if ye will not do so, behold, ye have sinned against the Lord. And be sure your sin will find you out. Now those, the easy believism heretics like to twist this and mean it, make it to mean nothing unto us. And yes, this was specifically written unto the Jews. Yes, this is a different dispensation. Doctrinally, yes. But remember Romans 15 verse 4? All things that were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we might have patience and comfort through the scriptures. Just paraphrase that big part. Hmm? And the reality is, isn't it shocking that sooner or later your sin does find you out? And what happens when your sin finds you out? What happens when the Lord rebukes you through the scriptures? What happens when the Lord rebuke, rebukes you through the scriptures through a beloved brother? For example, let's say that my beloved brother, my dear friend Alexander Hartley, were privy to the fact that I was drinking. And he rebuked me for it. Amongst the brethren. Brad, you're in sin. You're drinking. 
to access. You need to repent. Please repent. Get right with the Lord. He would admonish me as a brother. But see now, what do I do? Do I go into the scriptures and say, you uh, know, hey, it says, use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and oft infirmities? You know, your pet sins that you have? Do you build a fence around it? And remember, dear brethren, all sin is an abomination in the sight of God. All sin. Granted, I personally believe that there are certain, you know, pride, for example, is a little bit more odious unto our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. And when you mess with this book, you know, the ones who make all the Bibles, you know, but all sin is an abomination in the sight of the Lord. How do you react? What do you do? When your pet little sins are kicked, what do you do? You know, you can reference 1 Samuel chapter 15 about Saul. When Samuel came to him about, you know, why do I hear this bleating in my ears of the animals? Paraphrasing. The Lord told him to go kill all these, the Amalekites. He didn't. And then Saul comes out, ah, I did the will of the Lord. And Samuel said, then, then what am I hearing this for? The Lord used Samuel to rebuke Saul. And what did Saul do? Because I feared the people. It was them. Yea, the woman thou didst give me, I did eat of the tree. It was the woman's fault. The woman uh, that thou gavest me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Deflecting and lying at the same time. I did do the will of the Lord. Oh, it was the people. Deflection, lying. And you can also reference uh, 2 Samuel chapters 11 and 12 about King David. How he killed Uriah the Hittite. After he committed adultery with Bathsheba, and she was with child out of that adultery. David had Uriah murdered. And then Nathan came to him. Thou art the man. But before that, remember, Nathan gave a little parable about a little ewe lamb unto David. And David had righteous indignation. You know, whoever did this will repay sevenfold. Thou art the man. What did David do? I have sinned against the Lord. He was sorry. And afraid. Because he deserved, and he, according to the law, he deserved to die. Do you justify your little stupid pet sin? Especially when you are rebuked? Or do you, through the scriptures, get on your knees and get right with the Lord and repent? Or do you defend it? Like, the, like video games. A lot of people we have seen, brethren, who defend video games as harmless, you know, putting wicked things before their eyes and make excuses and justifications. Ah, 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 ah. And then what happens? Then what happens? <clears throat> Go to Acts. Go to Acts chapter 2. I've touched on this before, but there are several new people. Several new people who have joined, probably all enemies, probably a multitude from just one man, more likely, or two, one man, one child, but Acts chapter 2, verses 36 on verse 39, 
Acts chapter 2, verses 36 on to verse 39. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified both Lord and Christ. Now, this is this current dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, but it is to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Okay? This was our Lord offering the kingdom of God, the spiritual kingdom, onto the Jewish people first, primarily. They rejected the millennial kingdom. Christ then went to the cross, died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You know, he shed his blood on the cross to atone for our sins. Okay? They rejected first the millennial kingdom. After his death, burial, and resurrection and ascension, the kingdom of God, the spiritual kingdom, was first offered unto the Jews. That's why the signs were there. Okay? That's why the signs were there. That's why Peter is giving different modes. Such as, Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you. Who is that? The Jewish people. And to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Now see, dispensationally, this is the time of the Gentiles, this current dispensation, but it had to go on to the Jewish people first. That's why, <clears throat> that's why in Acts chapter 3, it's different. In verse 19, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. That's why it's different, because it was going on to the Jewish people first. But see, see, back to Acts chapter 2, let's uh, pick up from verse 37. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts, in their heart, and said unto Peter, and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? What was the accusation? Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. And what did they do? Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. And said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And look at verse 41. What did they do? Then they gladly received his word and were baptized. And the same day there were added on to them about 3,000 souls. They crucified the Lord Jesus Christ. The Romans did. But the Jewish people handed over their king unto the Romans to be crucified. It was the Romans who crucified the Lord. But see, the Lord, the Holy Ghost through Peter, called them out on their sin. And what they do, once they were pricked, they repented. And they received his word, and they gladly received his word and were baptized. But of course, what's the contrast to that? Acts chapter 7, I've covered this before. I have covered this before, but it's very pertinent right now. Acts chapter 7, verses 51 on to verse 60. 
What, is, what happens when Stephen calls out Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes and the people on their sins? Verse 51 on to verse 60 in Acts chapter 7. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which shewed before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, whom have received the law by the disposition of angels, and have not kept it. Now, remember, in Acts chapter 2, they were pricked. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. Sharper than any two-edged sword, boy. And they gnashed on him with their teeth. Oh, he was a little offensive to them, yeah. But he called them out on their sin and sure got their attention. And what'd they do? They gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Verse 57. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears. Didn't want to hear anymore. And ran upon him with one accord. And cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. And we all know what became of Saul, don't we? And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, while he was being stoned for telling them the truth, for convicting them, for making them aware of their sin. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. What do you do? What do you do when your little pet sin is kicked? What do you do when you are reproved? What do you do? It's a very telling thing, brethren, on how someone takes a rebuke. Very telling, because look at what has happened lately. People, when their pet sins are, have been kicked, or, or they have exposed themselves, what happens? They justify it. They get shown for what they truly are, not of us. And what do they do? They go on the offensive and attack the one who rebuked them. And then they all seem to go after one specific individual, don't they? Isn't that something, huh? Isn't that something? See, they will go after the one who outed them. That the Lord, excuse me, used to out them. Don't go after them. Yes, yes. And go to rewrite the algorithms. But then they will turn their attention to go after one individual specifically. And you all know who I'm speaking about, Brother Brian Denlinger. Isn't that something? But see, isn't it interesting that when their sin is kicked, it tells 
very telling of what type of person, spirit, soul, and body, you are dealing with, whether they be saved or lost. Now granted, a saved brother or sister, when you get your sins kicked, at first, yes, because uh, our Lord has condemned sin in the flesh. Okay? While we are in the flesh, there's always going to be that war between flesh and spirit. Okay? Always going to be there. Till we are absent from the body and present with the Lord. So at first, yes, you might get your little feathers ruffled. But see, those who are truly of the church of the living God, who have the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, dwelling within them, and the Lord is their spirit. It's going to break you. You're going to repent. And you're going to get right with the Lord. But those who put up a fence and justify their sin. Because so many people right now are so concerned about how do we know the false from the true? By a confession that can be robotically repeated. Because you speak in blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you shall know them by their fruits. <laughs> how do they deal with their sins being kicked? <coughs> <clears throat> hmm? It's very telling. Go to Luke. Go to Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13 now. Luke chapter 13. Verses 1 on to verse 9. Luke chapter 13, verses 1 on to verse 9. There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans, because they suffered such things? <clears throat> I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Look at verse 2. Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things? Verse 3. I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Or those eighteen upon whom the tower of Siloam fell and slew them, think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwell in Jerusalem? I tell you, nay. But except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon, and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and find none. Cut it down, why cumbereth it the ground? And he answering, said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it, and dung it, and if it bear fruit, well. And if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. What do you do when our Lord Puts his finger right on you. Right on that little pet thing of yours that you justify. That you know is spoken against in the scriptures. What do you do? Oh, God knows my heart. What do you do? Point at other people. What do you do? What do you do? It's a very telling thing, brethren, of what type you are dealing with. How they deal with that. Very telling. 
Look at the fruit of such. Go to John chapter 4. John chapter 4. This part right here was given to me by a beloved brother this morning. Incidentally, at nighttime, if you try to send me something and I don't respond, uh, because of uh, recommendation, I put my little fancy schmancy cell phone on airplane mode so I don't receive anything. I will get them, but I don't receive anything. A brother recommended to do that. So, anyway, John chapter 4, verses 7 on to verse 26. John chapter 4, verses 7 on to verse 26. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, <clears throat> which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, if thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest, ha asked, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Remember this. Note that verse. The woman saith unto him, unto him Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. The well is deep, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Who are you? What, what are you going to do, right? Let's keep reading. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. The water that is of the world. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Now watch this. Now watch this, okay? Let's reread verse 10. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, See, there are those out there who claim that they know the gift of God. That by grace ye are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works. And those works are reference unto the works of the law, lest any man should boast. Repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? But anyway, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink? Thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have, and he would have given thee living water. Now, let's go back to verse 15, okay? The woman saith unto him, okay? Sir, give me this water. She's asking that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Verse 16. Jesus saith unto her, Go, call thy husband and come hither. Moment of truth. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he... Whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saidest thou truly. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, Believe me, the hour cometh 
when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father, because the dispensation is going to change. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Roman Catholic Church, who say they are Jews, not ethnically, but replacing the Jews. Because it's for the church, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. For salvation is of the Jews, the apple of God's eye. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. A broken spirit and in truth contrite. <coughs> God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth and in truth excuse me the woman saith unto him i know that messiah cometh which is called christ when he has come he will tell us all things and now for what was that weird guy's name haggy right who, who said christ our lord jesus christ god our father never claimed to be the messiah <laughs> Um, Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Notice, going back to verse 16. Jesus saith unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. Right? And right above, Verse 15, the woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. There, she asked of him of it. And then, verse 10, remember, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have, and he would have given thee living water. Then what does Jesus say again? Jesus saith unto her, Go call thy husband, and come hither. Put his finger right on the thing. And what does she do? The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. And that saidest thou truly. What's the point? Isn't it interesting that the Lord first judged her before he gave her the living water, which was himself? Isn't that interesting? And, you, you know, you can reference, let's go here, John chapter 8, okay? Isn't that interesting how the Lord put his finger on that thing and judged her? Put his finger on that one thing. She came clean. Then he revealed things to her. John chapter 8 verses 30 on to verse 32. John chapter 8 verses 30 on to verse 32. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him if if ye continue in my word then are ye my disciples indeed and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free and who is truth our Lord Jesus Christ God our Father Sanctify, thy, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. They believed on them. 
But he's like, whoa, time out. Time out. And these who believed on him, what these very same Jews who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, believed on him, believed on him. Uh, verses 58 and 59 in John chapter 8. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Unless you believe I am he, you shall die in your sins. Unless you believe that Jesus Christ is God the Father. Oh, go away. One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Unless you believe that our Lord Jesus Christ is God the Father, you will die in your sins. Jesus saith unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. And what did these Jews who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ do? They believed on him. But see, he put his finger on that one thing. They were Abraham's seed. Then took they up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. <clears throat> See, our Lord has a habit of putting his finger on that one thing that you hold so precious and dear. <clears throat> and uh, let's let's remember Luke 14, okay? Luke 14, verse 26. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Skin for skin, yea. You get it? Our Lord has a good habit putting his finger on that thing that's so precious to you that you are unwilling to repent of or put up your little fake shield to justify yourself when everyone and their mother even Ray Charles can see the truth the fruit of those who say they are of us and not how you deal with it it's a very telling thing, brethren. Go to Proverbs. Go to Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 20 on to verse 26. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 20 on to verse 26. My son, keep thy father's commandment, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually about thine heart, and tie them about thy neck. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life to keep thee from the evil woman from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman mystery Babylon Roman Catholicism perhaps lust not after her beauty in thine heart neither let her take thee with 
her eyelids, for by means of a whorish woman. Mystery Babylon. Roman Catholicism. <clears throat> for by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Look at verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. The longer you walk with our Lord Jesus Christ, the more grateful and thankful you become for, rebu for rebukes, for reproofs, for corrections, for chastisement. And brethren, when someone has been claiming to live as a Christian for over two decades and builds fences around their justification and go on the attack, you shall know them by their fruits. The longer you are walking with our Lord, the more grateful, the more thankful you are for godly rebukes from brethren through the scriptures. And I praise the Lord that there are several of my brothers who love me enough to rebuke me if I am wrong, as I would do for them. Uh, Proverbs 9, Proverbs 9, verses 6 on to verse 10. Now see, those of us who are saved of the church and the living God, the longer you walk with the Lord, yeah, our rebuke stings, but the longer you walk with our Lord, according to the scriptures, within the Pauline epistles especially, that's doctrine for us today in this dispensation, which is ending. You are grateful and thankful. Want to see the contrast? Proverbs 9, verses 6 on to verse 10. Forsake the foolish and live, and go in the way of understanding. He that reproveth a scorner getteth to himself shame. Scorner. You approve a scorner? How do you get shame? Are you ashamed that you did it? No. But they will usually put up a fence and deflect and lie. Vladimir Lenin had a wonderful saying that he adhered to, as do many people here on YouTube do. When their pet sins are kicked, when they are exposed for what they truly are. Oh, excuse me. Call the enemy what you are and always speak the opposite of the truth. Deflect, as King Saul did, and lie, as King Saul did. Oh, I can think of several people right offhand that do that, have done that, and continue to do so. <clears throat> but I'm not going to give you what you want. He that reproveth a scorner getteth to himself shame. Because they'll go on the attack and blow up on you. And try to shame you. Try to throw mud at you. And he that rebuketh a wicked man getteth to himself a blot. Shame and a blot. Once they're exposed, once they are made manifest. Instead of repenting and coming to the Lord. They go on the attack and attack the messenger. And it says, getteth himself a blot. I like to liken it onto getting some dog dung on the bottom of your sandal. That just won't come off even though you try to scrape it off in the grass, right? Verse 8, reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee.
someone who you know, definitely know, is lost. You know, after the first and second admonition, uh, he who is a heretic after the first and second admonition, reject, okay? Uh, after that, he that repro uh, reprove not a scorner lest he hate thee. He's already been made manifest. What good is it for you, brother, to try to reprove this man? What good is it to you? Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. Reprove not a scorner lest he hate thee. Don't cast your pearls before swine. There is enough out there, brethren, for these people. Let them alone. There's enough out there for these people. But see, they build a fence around it. And ye shall know them by their fruits. But also the contrast here. Rebuke a wise man and he will love thee. You know, um, when I was in error over 1 John 4, verses 1 through 3, the Lord started working on me quite mightily. Being like, oh, hey, Brad, Brad, you might not get this as well as you think you do. And then a brother of mine brought it to my attention. You know, he kind of rebuked me. He did. It was the straw that broke the camel's back. And I love him for it. I love him for it. Several of my brethren have rebuked me. And I love them for it. But see, a scorner, one who has been made manifest, you out of love, through the scriptures, through the Holy Ghost and the Lord Jesus Christ. God, our Father is that spirit. The Lord is that spirit. Um, you try to reprove this scorner. He's just going to hate you even more and more. And literally hate you. There is a one who unfortunately is my deadliest of enemies. On his accord, not mine. Who would kill me if given the opportunity. He would. He would literally kill me. Actually, uh, there are quite, uh, there are actually several of you enemies, devils that would personally kill me if the chance arose. Unfortunately, there are many out there who would literally kill Brother Brian Denlinger. And some have apparently even tried. You see? How do you handle when your little pet sin is kicked? Does it make you angry? Does it make you angry? Go to Proverbs 14. We will be reading verses 2 under verse 17. I'm going to be doing a little expository stuff on this one, okay? Can you handle this? Can you handle this? Proverbs 14, verses 2, on to verse 17. <clears throat> he that walketh in, up, in his uprightness feareth the Lord. But he that is perverse in his ways despiseth him. Every single one of these enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. The easy believism heretics. They have no fear of God before their eyes. They don't fear the Lord. The only love they have is for themselves. For their works. That is saving them. They have no fear of God. But he that is perverse in his ways despiseth him. He that walketh in his uprightness feareth the Lord. I fear the Lord. How about you, brother, sister? But he that is perverse in his ways despiseth him. They despise us who fear the Lord. Because they don't. In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride. 
Right there, brethren, pride. But the lips of the wise shall preserve them. Pride. Oh, yeah, boy, pride. It's your pride that you put a, build a fence around your little pet sins. It's your pride that sets you off. It's your pride that's going to take you down to hell. And that's where a lot of you fakes are going. I say a lot because who knows what the Lord can do with some of you. But I'm going to be saying about 99.9% .9 of you are going straight to hell. Where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increases by the strength of the ox. There are some of us of the Church of the Living God who are not that refined. When uh, some of us uh, do work for our Lord, kind of get it messy, but a lot of increase. There's nothing wrong with that. But see, also, contrast to that, these enemies, the coadjutors, the Jesuits, the infiltrators, working under their provincial in the United Kingdom. Their little rabbit attack poodles go out. They're hardly refined. Hardly. All they can do is agitate. That's all they can do is agitate, agitate. And for them, it brings much increase. And their God, of course, is the little G God of this world, Satan. A faithful witness will not lie, but a false witness will utter lie. You know, if you are saved and born again in the church of the living God, you are sealed until the day of redemption. You have the Holy Ghost. God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord is that spirit living within you. He is a, he is the, excuse me, faithful witness. But a false witness will utter lies. Need I say anything more? A scorner seeketh wisdom and findeth it not, but knowledge is easy unto him that understandeth. Hold your place here. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Oh, thank you. <laughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12 on to verse 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12 on to verse 15. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. You're saved and born again. You have the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ dwelling within you. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the capital S, Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. We're going to get more on that in, uh, towards the end of this video. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. And see, these easy believers and heretics, they're trying to instruct the Lord. And go to Jude, go to Jude, verses 17 on to verse 20 in Jude. Jude does not have chapters. <laughs> Jude, seven, uh, Jude 17 on to verse 20. But beloved, 
Remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time, who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves, sensual having not the capital S spirit. Sensual, led by their senses, separate themselves, right? Look what happens when people's sins get kicked or they are outed or out themselves as false. What happens? They separate themselves onto that lot of easy believism, Jesuit coadjutor, wicked Satanist devils. They separate themselves and go over to them very quickly. Why is that? Having not the spirit. They're led of their senses. They can't control their tempers. They're full of pride which is your greatest weakness, your pride, and your temper. Having not the Spirit. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Proverbs 14, verse 7. Go from the presence of a foolish man when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Of course. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Come on, fingers. Work with me. What verses are we going to read? 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 on to verse 18. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Comparing this to what we looked at in Jude, those people who separate themselves, being sensual, led of their senses, having not the Spirit, in comparison unto those of us who are saved, born again, of the church of the living God, we come out from among them. See the difference. And also go to now Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs chapter 18, verses 2 and 3. Proverbs 18, verses 2 and 3. A fool hath no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. When the wicked cometh, then cometh also contempt. When the wicked cometh, then cometh also contempt. And with ignominy, reproach. Brethren, look at what has happened for those who have been made manifest. Look at every single one of them who went out from us but were never of us. Look at every single one of them that went out. When the wicked cometh, then cometh also contempt. And with ignominy, approach.
back to Proverbs chapter 14, verse 7. Go from the presence of a foolish man when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. And they might say things such as, well, God knows my heart. God knows my heart, even though there is no fruit of the Spirit within me. Even though I am as wicked as wicked could be. But yet God knows my heart. Yeah, yeah, he sure does. He does know your heart. He does know your heart. Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 9 and 10. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give to every, even to give every man according to his ways, and according to the fruit of his doings. Yeah, God knows your heart. Yeah, it sure does. Sure does. You want to know? You you want to know what about yourself personally? See. See, it says here in verse 7, Go from the presence of a foolish man. The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. When thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge, don't know the Lord. But the Lord knows their hearts, right? You want to know what the Lord thinks of you? Now those of us who are truly saved, we were cut. Or excuse me, we were pricked in the heart when we came to know what our Lord thought of us. And we were broken over it and sorry that we have sinned against our God who died for us on the cross and shed his blood for us to atone for our sins and died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. See, in Romans chapter 3, verses 10 on to verse 18, is the condemnation. God is putting his finger on you. And those who are fake, who just jump over this and go straight to believe and ignore calling on the name of the Lord or make up this nonsense that prayer is a work. Watch Brother Matthew Landau's videos about that. He's really going to tear that thing wide open, praise the Lord. See, we of the Church of the Living God, we were pricked in our hearts over this and brought to godly sorrow because of it and turned from ourselves in our godly sorrow and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ for what he did for us on the cross. And in the ultimate shoe of humility, we called upon the name of the Lord. And see, that's why all you fakes hate that. Because it's humiliating, isn't it? It's humiliating to call on someone who's greater than yourself. Because think about it. You're saved by your belief. You are. Just believe. Skipping over brokenness and contrition. Belief, then ignoring Humbling yourself by calling on the name of the Lord. And then refuting the inevitable changed life that comes after your salvation. You guys are so easy to spot. But then again, that's what people want. But see, this is you. This is us. But we trust on the Lord Jesus Christ. Not on ourselves. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are, all, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. That includes you, that includes me. If there is anything good that comes out of me. It's not me doing it. It's the Lord. And you. 
you do the deeds of your father. Who is your father? The devil. Ours is the Lord Jesus Christ. Their throat is an open sepulchre. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. A little bitter, are you? You mad, bro? <laughs> are you angry? Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Every single one of you easy believism heretics, there is no fear of God before your eyes. Your feet are swift to shed blood, especially when you have been made manifest. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. Your peace it's a fleeting shadow, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. And it is told by the tale of an idiot. Proverbs chapter 14, continuing. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way. But the folly of fools is deceit. Fools make a mock at sin. But among the righteous, there is favor. The heart knoweth his own bitterness, and a stranger doth not intermeddle with his joy. The house of the wicked shall be overthrown, but the tabernacle of the upright shall flourish. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Even in laughter the heart is sorrowful, and the end of that mirth is heaviness. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. The simple believe every word, but the prudent man looketh well to his going. A wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but the fool, one who says in their heart there is no God, rageth and is confident. And very quickly, what is wisdom? Job chapter 28, verse 28. Anyone? Okay. Job 28, 28. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. A wise man feareth, feareth the Lord, and departeth from evil. But the fool rageth. Are you angry, bro? Huh, are you mad? Oh, does it get you angry? And is confident. Pride. Full of pride. And, of course, he that is soon angry dealeth foolishly. Note the tie-in with the two verses. And a man of wicked devices is hated. Because they have made their choice. On that, Proverbs 25, verse 28. Proverbs 25, verse 28. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. He that is soon angry dealeth false, uh, foolishly, and a man of wicked devices is hated. Oh, does it make you angry? Oh, does it light a fire underneath your buttocks? It's a very telling thing, brethren. 
What happens when someone's sins are made manifest and kicked? What do they do with it? It's a very telling thing. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Verses 19 on to verse 21. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such the like. And of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God, the spiritual kingdom. You shall know them by the fruits, brethren. Now, yes, church and people of the church of the living God can do these things, yes. Proverbs chapter 15. Proverbs chapter 15. Oh, fingers. Proverbs chapter 15. Verses 31 on to verse 33. The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul. But he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. The fear of the Lord is the instruction and wisdom, and before honor is humility. See the difference is? Those who are truly saved of the church of the living God We have our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, living within us. And if we put up a fight, our lives are going to be ruined. And at the worst case scenario, the Lord can kill you to turn and hand one over onto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. 1 Corinthians 5 verse 5. That can happen to someone of the church of the living God who messes around. And it will be swift, and it will be devastating. But those who are not of us, you know, see, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Okay? Here's the thing. Go to John, chapter 16. John, chapter 16. Verses 7 on to verse 14. Here's what these guys don't have. John, chapter 16, verses 7 on to verse 14. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. He will reprove the world of sin. These people are of the world, and you have the Comforter, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, our God, our Father, is that Spirit? He, through you, will reprove the world of sin, and they are of the world, and of righteousness and of judgment. Instruction and in righteousness, judging yourself according to the Scriptures, we're going to get into that. Don't worry about that. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and ye see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. 
to judge what is right according to the scriptures. I have many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will shew you things to come. He shall glorify me, and he shall receive a mind, and shall shew it unto you. The Spirit of Truth, he shall guide you into all truth. Okay? Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. Come on, fingers, work with me. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6, under verse 12. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that calleth you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there are but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Just believe. Repentance is going from unbelief to belief. Calling on the name of the Lord is for the Jews. Prayer is a work. But there be some would that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Every single one of you easy believism heretics pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Let's read that again. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. You're all accursed, you easy believism heretics. Every single one of you. Every single one of you. From Canada to England to Australia, you're all accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. Let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? See, the easy believism gospel, false gospel pleases men because it doesn't put their its finger on their sins just believe and look at these easy believism heretics look at them they are seeking to draw men after themselves they are seeking to please men For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. See, a lot of these easy believism heretics, all they are is agitators. Agitate, agitate, agitate. To bring up junk. To cast filth upon the church of the living God. And to draw people after them. To please men. Look at them. They can't teach nothing. All they can do is agitate. 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 That's all they can do. They have no substance. They have nothing. All they can do is attack. And all they're seeking is the praises of men. Men of the world. That's it. That's all they got. But, for if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Bunch of men pleases you, easy believism heretics. You little wicked, 
rabid attack poodles full of sound and fury signifying nothing. First Timothy chapter six. First Timothy chapter six, verses three on to verse five. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud. Oh boy. Look at these easy believers and heretics. Every one of them is arrogant and proud, full of themselves because of their work of belief. Knowing nothing, they know nothing because they are spiritually discerned. They have not the spirit. But doting about questions and strifes of words. Yes, words do have meaning. But see, they strain at a gnat and swallow the camel. They pick the little thing and magnify it. They, they cut out 30 seconds and don't even bother to show the whole context. Even Brother Brian Denlinger will attest to that. Yeah. See, the Jesuitical maxims, the end justifies the means, is showed forth in the way that these people behave themselves. He is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings. Is that not the fruit of every single one of these easy believism, wicked heretics who came out from us because they were not of us because one of their sins got kicked or because they just were an immature little child of an advanced age who just couldn't control their childish, devilish little temper and are so easily angry. You mad? Oh, does it bother you? <laughs> Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds. These people have corrupt minds. And destitute of the truth. Supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. Now, the gain is godliness. We often attribute the gain thing as being monetary. Money, right? No, 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 no. Look at these people, brethren. Like I said, they're seeking to draw people after them. Okay? That's why they want you to name them. That's why it's like, oh, you don't got the guts to name anybody. Oh, please. You think I'm going to give you that? That's what they want. To draw people after them. See, their gain is to draw people away from the truth while they're calling themselves godly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're gaining. That's their gain. To get people away from the truth. From such withdraw thyself. Brethren, again, go to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Verses 15 on to verse 21. Matthew chapter 7. Excuse me, on to verse 20. Verses 15 on to verse 20. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. 
Do men gather grapes of thorns, or figs of thistles? Even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. How do you deal with when one of your pet sins is kicked? How do you deal with the rebuke? According to the scriptures, done out of love by a brother of the Church of the Living God. How do they deal with it? I'm going to say this to you. If someone persists in justifying themselves rather than the scriptures, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, if someone persists in building a fence around their little pet sin, there could be a very good chance that you are dealing with false brethren. Very good chance. You shall know them by their fruits. And brethren, with the times coming right now, we have to be very diligent and go to 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 5 on to verse 8. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Now I pray to God that ye do no evil, nor that we would... That, nor, ah, beg your pardon. Now I pray to God that ye do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. And that's, the, that's what it is, brethren. We can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. When the Lord puts his finger on that one thing, what do you do with it? Have you counted the cost? Especially right now, okay? When the persecution on the Church of the Living God is going to come? Are you ready? Have you counted the cost? It's easy to say you have counted the cost when things were going lightly, right? But now, once the... Uh, once it's going to hit the fan, beg your pardon for that. Again, this is where the rubber meets the road. First Corinthians chapter 11. Examine yourselves. First Corinthians chapter 11, verses 32 on to verse 33. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. How do you judge yourself? We'll get to that really quickly. But look at this. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord. That we should not be condemned with the world. Self-judgment. And if you're hanging on to that little thing, you know, putting up a fence about it, justifying it, even when you know that it's something the Lord hates. 
Whatever it may be. I don't know what it is. For you, I don't know what it is. What do you do? Do you judge yourself? Or does the Lord got to do it? And what happens? But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord. Now, chastening is good. Shows that He loves you. Yes. Yes. Those of us who are truly saved and born again of the church of the living God. His love is for us. Okay? For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Examining, examining yourself and judging yourself, how do you do that? This is why there are those out there who call themselves Christians who conveniently don't read the scriptures but will hold it up and wave it around and say uh, yeah, they believe it but yet they don't study it, read it, do anything why is that? because uh, go to Psalm 119 how do you examine your, yourself? how do you judge yourself? This is a no-brainer for you. Uh, Psalm 19, uh, Psalm 119, Beth. Psalm 119, Beth. Oh, excuse me. Verses 9 on to verse 16. Sorry, Beth. How do you judge yourself? How do you examine yourself? Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Where's his word? With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord. Teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. Think about that. There's no going back now for those of us at the Church of the Living God have, who have made loud protestations. Think about that. You ready? I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. You see, brethren, <coughs> um, with what's coming, we need to judge ourselves. And since I have personally myself made quite a few loud protestations, especially around here, you know, to find to get any job nowadays, you're going to have to wear a mask. Now, granted, around here a lot don't enforce it, but it is on the law books. But you know what? Every single one, when the vaccine comes, it's coming. If you don't take the vaccine, you won't be able to have a job. And that's from the guy who flips a burger from those who design computer stuff. Okay? First Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter, chapter 4. Let's end it on this. For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. That, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lusts, 
excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. Well, you're not going to get a vaccine? You're not going to wear a face mask? You're not going to keep social distancing? What? You're saying that I'm crazy for wearing a face mask? You're saying this is making people ready for the money? Get out of here! Hello, people. Who shall give account to himself, to, who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead. For this, for, for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the, in the spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober, and watch unto prayer. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth. That God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice, inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, brother. For the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. Brother, you know who you are. Don't forget that. Okay? Please. We're praying for you every day, beloved. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, <laughs> let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. It's almost said as happen chance, isn't it? I, could, you can't, I can just picture Peter saying, oh, you know, when the Holy Ghost was writing this through Peter, as a Christian, Verse 17. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And look at what's happening, brethren. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. And look at what has happened, brethren. Those who say they are of us, but were never of us, they were manifested. You know, let, let's, let's, 1 John 2, verse 19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. How did they deal with? 
when their sins, their little pet things that they justify and defend are kicked, that are contrary to the scriptures, how do they deal with it? You shall know them by their fruits. It's a very telling sign how someone deals with rebuke, reproof, and corrected when the light has shined on them. It's a very telling thing. And right now, brethren, judgment starts at the house of God and it already has. Look around you. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Um, I just hope that our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, be magnified. That's all I care for. We are praying for so many of you. And not one of you, dearly beloved, is ever forgotten in our prayers. And again, unto all of you who have given unto us, the Lord recompense you and bless you. This week has been a really gorgeous week out there weather-wise, and we have been busy out there doing things, tracting, speaking, witnessing, that kind of stuff. But um, anyway, I love you. Thank you so much for watching if you do. Be ready. See you in the next video.